If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at CottageBlogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This is your host, Heather Bayer, and I'm once again delighted to be with you. As uh, as this is published, it's been hmm, probably three weeks since I came back from a wonderful trip to Florence, Italy. And in that trip, I met up with my eldest son and his wife and my granddaughter, Edda, who is now, now nine months old. And as I've said before, you know, we see her very infrequently. And she was, uh, uh, it was February, February of March of this year that I first met her when she was three months old. So now she's nine months and it will be another mm, six or seven months again before we get together in Berlin in April of next year. So... Yeah, that was it was fantastic. And I I have I know I have mentioned this before and I've also mentioned what a wonderful time we had in Florence uh going to the Vacation Rental World Summit which was founded by Antonio Bortolotti. And when I interviewed Alan Egan recently, I mentioned that I would be talking to Antonio and exploring with him why he why he did this, why he started up the Vacation Rental World Summit what he feels is the benefits, what he feels are the huge benefits of face-to-face networking and peer contact and being able to attend presentations by some really very, very clever people in this vacation rental space. And you know my feelings on it. I've talked about going to conferences before and it it was a huge eye-opener four or five years ago when I went to the podcast movement conference for the first time. And and that was what really, really started me on the path of serious podcasting. Before that, I had been playing, you know, I, I knew what I had to do, but I'd played at it because I I didn't really have the contacts to get me motivated, to get me really going on the path that I wanted to be on. And it's very similar to where we are often are in, in our vacation rental world. We, we go along feeling that we're doing everything so professionally, so well, we're getting some success, but there's some fr- frustration out there. So we might go online and go to Facebook groups and go to forums and look for some help. And these things are amazingly helpful. I know from my activity or my you know, following the Say No to VRBO Facebook group and Evelyn Badia's The Hosting Journey. You can learn a lot from the people who are posting there consistently, who are sharing all their valuable experience. The one thing I've noticed, though, is that it can be incredibly confusing because you'll be getting conflicting advice from different people. And sometimes it's, it's a little bit, you know, you find yourself uncertain which direction that you want to take. When you attend a conference in person and you meet people face to face and you can perhaps take a a quiet area of the conference hall or lobby and go and sit down with them over a cup of coffee and really ask your questions of one person who you trust and know in the industry, that's where things really begin to happen. Because all of a sudden, it's like, it, it is like a light bulb goes off. You do have that aha moment when you feel that you've got the information that you were looking for without the peripheral noise. Now, this is not to say that every person you talk to is going to be right. But many of the people that attend these conferences, that speak at these conferences, have been in the business for 10, 15, 20, myself, nearly 25 years. And we have seen how it's changed 
over the years. And we immerse ourselves 18 hours a day for some in the industry. So it's pretty likely that those people are going to have some very educated and well-researched points to make. So as I say, this is not to detract from the great people who are contributing on these forums and in these groups. But I am so pro attending conferences. I've attended half a dozen conferences outside of the VR world. The podcast movement being one of them. But I've been to other conferences as well where you come away feeling so motivated and full of really good information that has come from the top. So on that note, I want to introduce Antonio Bortolotti to you. For for those of you who've been following me for a long time or who follow Antonio, of course you know who he is. Antonio has been operating in the vacation rental business for many, many years. He's a very skilled web designer. He's designed some terrific websites. And I think uh, if you recall me speaking to Terry White Recently, we were talking about booking platforms, but I wanted to make a point in that interview that he had just launched his new website and I found it completely captivating. And that site was designed by Antonio Bortolotti. And you often see Antonio's mark on other websites as well. His his skills are, are based a lot on image imagery, creating the right image that is going to show off a a property, a location, and bring that experience of being there to the viewer who comes on the website for the first time. Antonio has also been running a vacation rental course for many, many years, and he's been very successful with this. And I know of many people who have attended Antonio's online courses and, and created a lot of success following from them. Today, I'm going to be talking to Antonio about the Vacation Rental World Summit in Florence, what the differences were between this one and the the first uh, live summit he did in Barcelona last year, and from the origins of VRWS, which were an online conference, which he held for a few years before embarking on the face-to-face style of uh, get-together. We're going to be talking about the different presenters who were there, what he learned from each of them, because I know from our my own conference, Vacation Rental Success Summit, that we do learn new stuff every single time we go. This is not a case of, of anybody out in the industry being static. We learn all. The- so stick around, enjoy my conversation with Antonio and and hear a little bit more about the Vacation Rental World Summit. Well, welcome to Antonio Bortolotti, who has been on this show for a number of occasions. So it's a welcome back, Antonio. (laughs) Thank you, Heather. Yeah, it's true. I was counting the number of times that I was on your show. I think together with Matt, we're just like topping up, you know, (laughs) It's the people, you know, I, I hear feedback from, from listeners who say, you know, who, who they've enjoyed um, hearing from. And, and you, Matt, Alan Egan, you're all, you know, up there on that, um, on that sort of plateau where it, it, your, your voice is recognized and your wisdom is, um, is appreciated. Well, that's good to hear. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, although I don't, I don't think I'm that wise. I'm kind of crazy. But... Tell, tell me about crazy then. I mean, you, you and me both. Crazy is 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 putting on a conference. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a it's a good trait of uh, like a visionaire being crazy visionaire because. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, it's a little seed that grew in my mind years ago when I was uh, talking at the on stage at the Home Away uh, summits years ago. And I was hearing that all that feedback of people that weren't really happy about it. They, they wanted more, uh, more things that, 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 that could just give them aha moments and the takeaways they could implement when going back home. So that's how I came up with the Mm-hmm. the online summit the first year and then we moved all the way up to where we are today. 
Yeah, interesting you say that because it that that really mirrors what happened to me. Uh, I I spoke at a home away summit in Phoenix a number of years ago, and it was in fact that was in fact the the, the first time I met Matt Landau because he was doing the same thing, and looking at hearing from people who who had this thirst for knowledge, but what they were getting was that they were getting some really good information, but it was um, how should we put it? It was it was branded home away, it was branded home away information. And and I think you and me both looked at this and said you know, that th- there is this huge need for an independent for independent voices in the industry that's away from the Airbnb home away instant software live res all these 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 conferences which are apparently really really great I haven't been to Resfest I haven't been to a live res conference but I know it's full of razzmatazz and lots of money spent on them. But when you come down to it, they're not independent. That's absolutely true. Even though, you know, it's good that they're there because they're part of the mix. Mm-hmm. We all need them. We all use them uh, at some, some, some levels. Some use them more, rely on them more, and others less. But it's always good to hear also um, what's going on, what's happening, what's working from uh, uh, the base, you know, from regular people like you and I who started from the ground up and uh, and built a successful business. And because we are in this awesome and wonderful industry, we got to know each other. We got to know, you know, like people like you and Matt and I and uh, and Alan, you mentioned earlier, Vanessa. There's, there's really a, like a little tribe of uh, really cool people. There are like a driving force, I would say. Uh, with all that that it entails, because uh, everything's so dynamic that I'm sure you, like myself, probably have stopped some time saying, wow, I can't keep up with all the things that are coming. Uh, uh, so where are we headed? What's going what's gonna to happen in five years from now? And this is also one of the, like, those alarms uh, that, that, that th- those red um, lights that tell us, wait. If we don't stay on the shoulder of the giants, if we don't keep progressing, studying, learning, and moving on, chances are that I'm, we may not be here anymore five years from now. Yeah, it's, it saddens me, you know, to, to see on yeah. some of these groups and forums people saying, you know, I've had it. I've had enough. I'm selling. I'm getting out of this yeah. business because I feel overwhelmed by the power of, of some of the big players in the industry and and they some somebody said the other day i just feel crushed by it um mm-hmm. and and that is that that's a sad thing to hear it is it is pretty sad but it's part of a game and i expected that uh, even years ago because uh, um it's sad because we all got or maybe the majority of us got into this business uh for passion because we are passionate about what we do. We're passionate about our little dream houses that we built with our own, you know, um, elbow grease. Uh, we went through nightmares many times to accomplish goals we had in mind. And then we set up this little machine that was working so well, so fabulously well. We, we, we put all the passion we could. We did something beautiful. And then inquiries started coming in. Uh, and it was so beautiful, but that belongs to the past, unfortunately. And so things changed, and the ones that were able to adapt or adjust or see the changes coming uh, um, are nowadays those that are still thriving, uh, uh, whereas those that really relied. You, you, I, I, I think you heard that many times, like so many people saying, oh, I don't need to have my own website. I don't need to do all the things that you're doing because, you know, I get all these these bookings coming from VRBO, from Home Away, from Airbnb. Why do I need to do that? It's so easy and comfortable. These same people are the ones that today are doing something else or they sold their mm-hmm. business. Yeah, absolutely. I I recently talked, in fact, last week in the podcast, I spoke to Steve Milo of Vacation mm-hmm. Rental Pros. Now, this is looking at sort of the other end of, of the spectrum. Steve went from having... Um, he started out with 15 properties in 2005 and he now has over 2000 under management. So he's a property manager or vacation rental pros is a property management company. 
and he has over 2,000 properties. So it's always interesting to look at, you know, the, I, I speak a lot to independent owners that just have one property, but always interesting to look at the other end of the spectrum and, and understand that property managers actually have the exact same issues. And yeah. Steve was saying exactly what you just said. And he was talking in terms you know, for property managers, how, because we were talking about how are property managers going to survive because the, the, um, the big players in this industry are trying to put themselves in this position of we are your property manager. And, mm-hmm. and Steve, you know, will, 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 a, will a property manager be around in five years from now? And his view is, is that if you don't adapt, you won't survive. Yeah, yeah. If you remember, Alan, Alan Egan's presentation in Florence was quite, quite charming when he showed those couple of slides uh, asking the crowd, the audience, can you recognize this guy? And everybody said, that's Darwin. So, <laughs> and you know, you know. I mean, I don't need to say anything else. Even for those who weren't there, it's Darwin. That means that you know, it's the law of adapting to the change, and uh, only those who adapt and adjust survive. Yes, this is true. You know, um, I look at my my grandchildren. Who I've just had my grandchildren staying for the weekend, and they they come into my room in the morning, and it's can I have your iPad? Can I have the iPhone? And we, we give them sort of 15 minutes of screen time um, in a morning, which is, I, I've always been a lazy, I was a lazy parent. I'm a, I'm a bit of a lazy grandparent now and I still like my, my extra 10 minutes to snooze. So it's just like, yes, you can have the iPad for 10 minutes. Um, but I'm just thinking back to when my kids were growing up, when, when they were small and thinking, well, what did I do then? What, how did I get my extra 10 minutes of snooze as a parent then? And I'm sure it was, it was, yeah, here's, here's your box of Lego, <laughs> something yeah. else. So, you know, parents adapt all the time. You adapt to, to the changes and um, in, in culture and society. And this is just exactly what we're having to do. It's just a little bit tough, I yeah. know, for some people um, because they, they experienced so much success for so long. And and now the changes are coming fast and furious. But it was I found yeah. it interesting listening to Vanessa D'Souza talking about technology and the changes we should be looking out for. And I in in her presentation, I know some of them were a little bit far fetched, but isn't everything far fetched? I mean, Star Trek we thought at the very beginning was was far fetched, and. <laughs> So many of the, the those um, the technology that was on Star Trek is beginning to has appeared and and continues to appear in our regular day to day life. Yes, exactly. That's if you remember, that's something I said on stage at some point uh, uh, because it's really a thought that I had in my mind since I was a, was was a child. You know, the movies that you mentioned Star Trek. Uh, but the movies uh, in, the, in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, they all uh, displayed some sort of technology which at the time was just in our minds. And we were saying like, oh, wow. But then today we've seen most of that technology of many of the things we saw in movies turn into reality. So it, it is scary on one end, but it's also uh, quite charming on the other, because if that is something that a mind can think and, uh, and, and, and put into a movie, uh, you think about like Minority Report that, that, that I mentioned in Florence, the things there, there are, there's some technology now. I read something recently of uh, some technology that's being developed that seems to be able to do things like, uh, like in that Tom Cruise movie there, which was quite scary at the time, where you move things with your hands, uh, screen. Yeah, the, the, the you know, AI, the um, uh, artificial intelligence, virtual world, uh, these things are really scary, but in some ways they'll probably be part of our world, even our vacation rental world in the future. It's going to be something we may have to deal with because when we are giving uh, our future guests the experience, maybe a preview of the experience they're going to have when they come to our place. 
Yeah, absolutely. It was, so, in, it was interesting in one of the sessions, and I, I can't remember who it was who said, you know, raise your hand if you have uh, an Amazon Echo or Alexa. Yeah. I think it was um, with Alex, Alex, and Alex Nigg and Tammy Sims. Um, <laughs> we're always on the forefront of all yeah. this techy stuff. <laughs> That's right. And and I was amazed at how many people said yes. We we do have mm. Alexa or we do have Amazon Echo, and and now of course all the remote home technology as as well. It's it's. Yeah. I know Michael ha- Mike Mike has it in his place. When um, when his guests arrive, he he knows when they've arrived at the door and he unlocks the door for them remotely, and yeah. and turns the heat up, turns it down um, after they've left. Um, monitors the his you know, the temperature of his hot tub after people have left. He's able to turn that down remotely. I mean, I'm thinking back. You know, ten years ago, that was not even conceptual. Mm-hmm. Well, it was conceptual somewhere, but certainly not in my mind. Yeah, technology drives change, I believe. And um, even if you don't want to believe that, uh, you see it in action every day. Uh, as you were mentioning earlier with your grandkids, you give them an iPhone and iPad. That's technology. Uh, so in the future, it's going to play a bigger and bigger role. And uh, as we were saying before, adapt or adjust. You'll have to welcome at least part of it in uh, our uh, our business if you want to keep up with uh, uh, with the future and with the present that is going to be because guests will expect that it's going to be part of the comforts that they want to have in the properties they go to so all these things uh, it's going to be quite challenging quite interesting to see how we will be able to manage uh, the perfect guest experience uh, which i believe uh, is a mixture of uh, technology and humanity, so the personal touch. So uh, no matter how how much you can scale a business, uh, uh, it's always that human touch that makes a difference and can make you a uh, human being, uh, can make you different from, from, from you know, your peers. And uh, Because in the end, what we want is human experiences. We want experiences. We've seen that uh, in Florence. We've seen that at all the other conferences. We know this, that this is an industry that's driven by the experiences and the importance of it. But at the end of the experience, there's always a human being, being the guest and being the provider of this experience to the guest. Yeah, it's all, I, I always find it interesting when I hear, I mean, cer- certainly Alan, Alan Egan talking because he's he he talks about um such su- such an importance about giving people information on locations rather than just mm-hmm. telling them how many beds and how many ba- bathrooms there are in a property you know who wants to know about your bathroom and I've heard Alan saying that so many times it's sort of ingrained at the moment um but then Martin Picard from Vrizy and I've heard Martin speak on numerous occasions and he's sort of like the master of of the experience and how we can convey that to to a guest uh, before, during, and then after their stay. What was it about Martin's um, presentation at in Florence that that you um, what, what did you take away from that? Whoa, that's a tough question, and I hope I won't uh, upset your listener because I have to be really honest. Uh, I was out of the room <laughs> for most of Martin's session because I had to uh, prepare a few things for the VR tech competition. And, uh, and, the, and the thing is that Martin's the only session that um, I re- – oh, this is maybe a little, a little story that people might uh, find interesting. Um, and you know because we were together uh, in, in, at other, in other editions of the summit. I like to work in an organized way and I like to, which is the reason why I'm chasing uh, all speakers weeks and weeks before the event uh, to make sure they provide me with uh, uh, their session so I can review it, we can discuss it together. And then also when I get on stage or at the final presentation, I know that everything's running smoothly with no hiccups and because there's always hiccups and I try to minimize, I'm sort of like a control freak. (laughs) So I want to make sure that my audience is going to have the best and the most memorable experience ever. And in order to do that, you have to minimize all things that can go wrong, which will always happen, but at least you can try to minimize them. So uh, Martin uh, uh, at this was like... uh, 
the least, let's say in a good way, the least collaborative person. I've, I've known Martin for quite some time, and I know that he, he does lots of things like last minute, last second, uh, last microsecond. So he was actually one of those that delivered his speech the day before the event or two days before the event. So I had like just time to go through his session very quickly. And then when, when we were uh, in Florence there at the summit, the night before, he said, I've completely redone my presentation because I thought that I could give some more, some better insights. And, you know, like I thought the speeches on day one were really super nice. Some of them were theoretical and not much practice. So I just like redone my session talking all about practical things. And so he basically handed me a, um, uh, a card a, um, uh, with his presentation five minutes before uh, he went live on stage and I was just uploading that to my computer. So <laughs> I really had no idea. He could have done anything, I had, which kind of like made me a little bit worried because I said, oh, what's going to happen now? Uh, and then, so when, when he gave his presentation, I had no idea what, what he was going to talk about. And, and I left the room because, as I said, I had to follow uh, a few <laughs> matters downstairs in the room. So I basically entered like two or three times nearly at the end of it, and I lost all of it. So maybe you can tell me what your takeaway was from well, this as, session, if you were there. Yeah, I mean, I'll... I'll, I'll follow up with that with I mean Martin spoke at the Vacation Rental Success Summit as 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 well um and and it was it was very you know his presentation was very well received this, this guy knows what he's 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 talking mm -hmm. about and I actually went down afterwards I was inspired by his presentation and went down afterwards and talked to his team because I was thinking gosh you know this is something I could definitely use for my um my own company so so that's that's how motivating and inspiring uh it was he talked um you know he talked talked really about the property man getting the property management um side of your business in order um to mm -hmm. enable you to concentrate on those um those experiences so it, it was practical it um it gave a real insight into Vreezy, his his company and, um, you know, I, it, it's interesting. I was sitting in the back of the auditorium, sort of way up high. And, you know, there, there were some, it was, and I always, I think because I give presentations too, and you look at the audience and you know when people are paying attention and when they are deep in their phones and tablets. I mean, this is a lot different from where it was when I was giving presentations, and I'm sure you'd, you've, you've known the same five or ten years ago, people sort of paid attention because they didn't mm -hmm. have anywhere else to put their attention. But now the amount of phones that are out and people are checking their, their emails, they're checking their social status, they're, they're perhaps writing a blog post while they're sitting there. And I noticed in Martin's session that there were far less people who are on, the, you know, who are on their phones and, and being mm -hmm. distracted. So it was it was a good session. I don't want to give anything too much away from any of these sessions because um, because I know that people can actually go and and um, purchase the uh, the replays. So um, all I would say is that that was a really valuable session. Um, gave me insights into how I can manage my company better. Which of course, if you can get that sort of outcome. From um, from a presentation or a um, you know, a major topic, then you've achieved your goals, and I think Martin certainly did. That's exactly the reason why you and I are putting together these events. I mean, if if any attendee or anyone watching from home gets even one single takeaway from the event and from that they can implement into their business, that's worth the investment, in my opinion, uh, like that, that 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 they make, that everybody makes. I used to last year or maybe two years compare that to um, one night. You know, the, would you be willing to invest the price of one night at your at one of your apartments in return for like X nights more bookings as a result of attending an event like this one or just watching it from home? 
And I sincerely believe that because, and honestly, luckily, uh, over time, over the years, I've had so much positive feedback of people who really like gained so much from being there. No wonder why uh, last year in uh, in Barcelona, we were 120 in the room and 50% uh, of the room in Barcelona was back in Florence. And there was another 10, 15% who purchased the ticket then for one reason or the other couldn't make it in the end. So they are, they, they're getting the recordings mm -hmm. to watch them at leisure. But that tells you not only the quality of the event, but also the commitment of the audience there. Because it's always a commitment. And it's also what we want. Because in the end, we want to help people that want to be helped. That there's, there's this kind of thing, uh, I, I'm sure uh, you develop the thick skin uh, over time, over years, so maybe they don't bother you anymore uh, any, when you receive like harsh comments or, you know, feedback is always good and it's always something that we all need to learn and do better next time. But there's sometimes some people who can be really nasty. And, uh, and, and knowing though that you've helped so many more out there helps you in a way, if you're not able to develop a thick skin, get the energy, get the motivation to move forward and go on and go ahead and do another one, taking into account all the feedback that you got, which is what I just did after this event, whose feedback was actually awesome. I'm really super happy, uh, even more than last year. But I just polled everyone. I don't know if you received it as well or not. And I, I just got like so many great feedback that I that I am collecting as we speak, printing everything, going through every single comment to make sure that like next year is going to be even better than this year. Well, you touched on something that's that's uh, that's close to my heart. And that's that's this thick skin thing. I never have developed a thick skin. And I think like most people you get when, when you get criticism, you do take it to heart. And, and it is it is so worthwhile to balance that occasional minor criticism against all the wealth of positive feedback but it, it mm -hmm. it's tough to take sometimes and I, I i just don't have that thick skin i i i'm more of a stick my okay something's coming in that's that's not as positive as i expect it to be and i burrow down and stick my head right in the sand until it's gone away oh yeah oh yeah me too i mean <laughs> last year i didn't sleep like three days because of one comment that I received in a mail, which I'm not going to repeat here because it was so nasty and so uh, unreal that nevertheless, it really hurt me a lot. And I, I spent like three days. I, I remember Christina, my wife, being so upset because she saw me miserable walking uh, in, uh, you know, down the hallway in her house, uh, feeling so down and questioning whether I should have done uh, again, put together uh, an event uh, with all that it, it, it entails, all the, 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 mm -hmm. the trouble, the issues, the risks, the nights awake, and all these things, for what? But then in the end, uh, uh, that's the answer. And the answer is, the reason to do this is seeing uh, the, the talking to the people that are coming to your, to, 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 to your event, uh, and seeing them in the eyes and see the energy and see the positivity, see the joy, see how uh, grateful they are for being there and how willing they are to rub shoulders with one another, uh, help each other, get to know um, new people, make new friendships. It's really like the networking part is amazing and it, it, it pays for all the efforts and all the nights awake that you have. It's literally is. I mean, I, I, I don't know if you were, I, I think you didn't make it the Friday evening for the aperitif on the rooftop uh, on, on that hotel, which has a spectacular view of, all over Florence. Uh, were you there? I don't think so. No, no. I, I think I, I mentioned to you that my son and his wife and my granddaughter mm. had come in for, for four or five days. So I had to maximize grandma time as well as, well as conference yeah. time. So yes, unfortunately, I missed that. So how, how did that yeah. go? Yeah, it went, it went amazingly well. It started off with like, I, I, the first thing is that I called the hotel like a few days earlier 
uh, to ask if it was okay to have the attendees showing up for an informal drink or something because, you know, having 200 people, uh, if we were having 200 people showing up on a terrace, maybe it was a little bit too many. I was afraid that the hotel would have said, no, I'm sorry, at some point we can't really handle it. But then they said, yeah, no problem. So I, I sent the communication to all attendees. And on the Friday evening, uh, they just started showing up. And like in a matter of like an hour, there were nearly 200 people there uh, everywhere. And the nice thing is that, as I said, like 50, 50 of them were already in Barcelona. And it was just like a gathering, a reunion of good old friends. Mm -hmm. And I, you, I could see these people, hey, hi, how are you doing? Hugging each other. Uh, and, you know, getting back from where they left off the year before. So telling them all the, 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 ad, the advancements they, they had done in a year, uh, sharing uh, the latest things that they learned. Uh, it was really, really a great, great atmosphere. And you could feel the vibe uh, in, in the vibe in the room, the vibe on the terrace. Uh, that is when I said, yeah, this is really, really worth it. Because see, look at these people. Everyone is so happy to be here. Everyone is so, so willing to spend a great weekend that uh, it's exactly what happened then the, 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 the two days later. And uh, so even though it, for me, it was incredibly demanding, as I told you, you remember we were supposed to do a call, um, a podcast, to record a podcast a few weeks ago. And I declined because I was ill and uh, I was quite badly ill. I mean, when, when, we, when we Skyped uh, each other, I typed on the keyboard, so you couldn't really hear how, how <laughs> ill I was. Uh, I had, at some point, I thought I had pneumonia. So the, exactly seven days before the, the event, I was in the hospital all day to do checks, x-rays, uh, blood tests, uh, and this thing, because I was afraid I couldn't make it. And I said, you know, I've been working on this for five months. There's 200 people coming from 24 countries, five continents. I have to get back. I have to get back on track and get well soon. And um, and yeah, and then you get you get up there uh, on that terrace, get on stage, uh, uh, and you see that it was worth every minute. Absolutely. Yeah, it it, it it's all worth it in the end. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I know. I know. I I I don't have as much um, involvement in 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 our. Uh, conference, the Vacation Rental Success Summit. Most of it goes down to my son Mike, and I see him going through this same thing. Um, I mean, we we all want, are oh, we want these events to be hugely successful? And it, what what what's actually happening is is that they are becoming hugely successful. And I love the fact that that between us, we have created this um, these these venues in North America and in Europe where people can go from one to the other with about five or six months between them and get to get, get together. And as, just as you say, when I was in Florence, I was meeting so many people that I'd last met in Toronto. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they are, I, I hesitate to say conference junkies cause I don't, I don't like that expression. Um, the, there should be another word for it. It's more of a traveling community. And and as we grow, so that community is going to grow too. And I I personally think that everybody is is benefiting hugely from it. So let let's just um, let's just touch on some of the other sessions um, that went on because when I was writing them down this morning and reflecting back on it and and seeing that there were people from all the different aspects of 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 the industry, so technology, marketing the guest experience, business development, the back end, which, which often the whole back end, you know, the property management systems, the SEO, all that stuff doesn't get as much attention. It was interesting to see that being talked about. The operational aspect of, of a vacation rental, when Alex and Tammy took the stage, you know, they are, they are um, immersed in what happens when guests are in the property to make sure that it is a great experience for them within the property, not so much when they're going outside, but within it. And, and of course, you know, I, I love to see that there was property management talked about and too. um, the, the guys from Prague for you, Benjamin, Simon, oh, yeah. Nicole, I think they did a fabulous job, um, 
it, it, on the first day to talk about how they've they're, they're really commanding the property management side of the of, of the business in Prague and how they've got to that and what resources, what tools, the things that they're using to make it so easy for them to manage a, a, a significant number of properties with such a small staff. So, so that was that to me was interesting, not just as a property manager, but because I talked to so many people who are on the verge of becoming a property manager. And the moment you start managing one more property, <laughs> somebody else's, you then become a property manager. So I've, you know, just, just because you only have two or three properties, if, if one or two of them are somebody else's, you are a property manager. So that I, I loved the, the fact that you were able to bring together all these different elements of our industry. Um, and then to, um, you know, to, to, to finish off with, with talking about um, Airbnb, um, it, was, uh, it, was, it was really well put together, Antonio, in terms of, of, of the structure of the, of the event. It was, you, you, you touched on every aspect of the industry. So what, uh, what shone out for you? What, was, um, what, what were your aha moments? From which standpoint? Uh, from uh, the organizational standpoint, or from from well, from? I, well, I, well, I know as an organizer, you tend to flit in and out. And I know I've talked to Mike, and I've you know after after Toronto last uh, earlier this year, and I said, so so what was your aha moment? And he said, uh, I he said I just didn't take anything in. He said he was it, it was all organizational. When I when I did the introduction to to this conversation and i said that even those of us in the industry who've been doing this for many many years so up to 10 20 25 years we all learn something new every time so yeah. i was just wondering if there, if there were any if if you were able to stop long enough or something stopped you in your tracks or whether you were talking to somebody and you got your own aha moment yeah, one aha moment was definitely Alan's session. That was also perceived uh, as one of the best sessions from the feedback that I got because he, he introduced the, 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 the vacation soup, these ingredients that uh, um, are likely to uh, set you apart from, uh, from the crowd and, uh, and, 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 and make your prospective guests dig deeper into the experience around what you have to offer, which is your property. So that makes a difference. There was an aha moment uh, watching the videos that he put together so nicely about the experience in Canada uh, was quite emotional, uh, quite touchy. And, uh, and I could definitely trust him when he said that the, the, the website he's been working on where he's basically driving um, website owners, property owners to add more of uh, the destination videos, nice ones of course, uh, have witnessed a bounce rate uh, that has never been seen for a website, meaning the bounce rate is like the, the time that a person spends on your website before they move away. And it's one of the measures of seeing whether a site is a good one or not. Uh, so normally when you have a very, very low bounce rate, it means that the person is staying on your website, is consuming the content that you have on your website, which is what we all want mm -hmm. in the end. Because the longer someone stays on your website, the more is trapped by the content you have, the more likely and inclined he or she will be to take action. And action will be sending you an inquiry or making a booking. This is something I've been an advocate of for many years. Uh, and seeing that uh, uh, on Alan's session uh, to such an extent, uh, was uh, was quite uh, quite enlightening, quite quite pleasant to see. Uh, uh, I, I know that uh, there was a slide at some point with my face on it as well. I was outside the room at that point too. He had a slide uh, with Back to the Future, where you saw the dog. If you guys remember Back to the Future, the the movie, uh, there was the doctor and uh, you know the young guy uh, driving the the, the car uh, is going Back to the Future. 
So I know that he put together a slide with my face as the young guy and or or as the crazy doctor and he as the, the other player putting together a vacation soup. That was kind of awesome. I heard people laughing at it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That 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 one brought the house down. And yes, I think you were you were the older guy and he was the Marty McFly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, I have to say, um, if I was looking, you know, if I'm looking back at my aha moments, that uh, that you, you've just nailed it. There, it was it was that quote about video and and eyes on the site and bounce rates and I, I'm actually I've talked to Alan and uh, I use that in in my um, Orlando uh, presentation at uh, in Orlando, just just referencing that same thing about uh, about content. I you know I had a great time. I connected with, with massive people that I know, and it was so good to meet so many new people. I met a lot of people who who listened to the podcast, and that was just amazing to to mm. to talk to people from from Italy and from Brazil and from um, from Holland and from England who all, all say I listen to the podcast every week. So so that to me was uh, was was a huge. Um, you know, that, that's always motivation to to carry yeah. on. So so tell me a couple of things, Antonio, about um, um, let, let, let's start with the replays. Are they uh, are they available yet? The replays will be available in a few days time. I just got like a, a first video from the videographer yesterday last night. And uh, so we're now working on uh, putting together all the recordings, which should be soon uh, ready uh, into the platform. Uh, the, all the presentation and the slides are already in, and uh, so content will just fall in a few in a few days. Well, I'll put a, when when, it, when it's ready. I'll put a link in the show notes to the Vacation Rental World Summit website, um, where I know people yeah. can go and register their interest. Can they in uh, in getting the replays? Yeah. Yeah, and they can get on there. It's it's really super easy because it's vacationrentalworldsummit.com. The homepage now has the, the, the call to actions, the buttons that say get all recordings here. We're running um, a, an early bird now so that people can, you know, uh, get access to it as soon as they're released at a super like uh, special rate. And um, and then once they're all there, I'm just going to launch it officially online uh, for for the rest of the world. Uh, so, yeah, that, that that's more or less it. OK. And. Uh... Any um, any news on the venue next year? I mean, you, mm-hmm. this I know people will be watching very closely. You know, you you had Barcelona last year, Florence this year. How can you beat this? Yeah, that that's a hard question. That's a, that's quite a number of people that said the same thing. I mean, uh, we're just watching to see how can you do it better next time because you know it's it's uh, you can't top this up, and it's it's going to be a. Uh, I know there's going to be. Ha- high expectations. I hope I'm going to fulfill them. Um, what would you like to see as a venue? I'm, I'm, I'm turning the question to you because I was asked <laughs> this so many times. I want Berlin. <laughs> that wasn't on your list. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> but that's a biased one because you've got family there. <laughs> oh, that's right. But I think, I think what's happened is that people have, uh, you know, that they're, they're, they're um, relating the Vacation Rental World Summit with a an, a fantastic European destination. Um, yeah. So you know you've done Spain, you've done Italy. I think um, the south of France would be mm-hmm. fabulous, um, or maybe somewhere amazing in Austria. Yeah, I I ran a, a survey. Um, a few days ago and I got quite lots of responses. There's actually at the moment, there's three cities, three places that are in the top uh, choice for, for all attendees. Um, I, of course I need to pick up the, the right venue. So I have to look at costs of organizing these uh, in all these three different places. I have to look for a sensational, spectacular venue because that's what I like to, 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 to do. I mean, I, I want it to be nice uh, in every aspect. So the venue plays an important role. The place plays another important role. It must be easy to reach by plane uh, and, uh, and in general, because 
I know Florence was not at, that easy to reach, but it was Florence. So you, you like you name it and people would just even walk. Actually, we had a remember when I mentioned we had a guy from Australia who biked yes. from Greece. <laughs> Actually, he, he flew into Athens and then he he biked from Greece, um, crossing then the Adriatic Sea to Puglia, southern Italy. And then uh, he just posted on our Facebook group uh, that he, he, he was just biking to the summit. It was just, uh, just amazing. So you would go to Florence. You wouldn't really bike to another place uh, that is not Florence, uh, probably. So I really have to be careful what I'm going to pick up next year. And it's going to have to take into account several factors, being exactly how easy it is to reach. First, possibly it must have good climate because it should, there should be nice weather. Uh, and so that also means that probably a part of Europe may not be ideal for organizing it, unless I'm super lucky, but I would tend to minimize, hopefully, uh, you know, the luck and go for a place that I know that it has more sunshine. And, um, yeah, and uh, okay. so these are more or less the criteria. Excellent. Okay, well, we'll, we'll we will wait to hear from yeah. you and i'll and announce it soon yeah and if there's anybody out there who is listening to this and you'd like to add your suggestions then you can do so on the show notes and uh, i'll pass yeah. that on to uh, antonio antonio it's been fabulous talking with you again it was great to catch up i hope we get to see you in san antonio next may mm -hmm. where we can show off our venue um and maybe you know take a walk on the river walk together i'm uh, looking forward <laughs> And uh, and in the meantime, everything that you know, things we've talked about will be um, will be on the the um, show notes. I'll put links on there, so please go on over there and take a look. Antonio, it's been a pleasure as ever. Same for me. Okay, talk to you again soon. Well, always a pleasure to talk to Antonio Bortolotti. So always a pleasure to talk with Antonio Bortolotti of the Vacation Rental World Summit. And we will wait with bated breath to see where the venue will be next year. And, um, and I hope um, Ant Antonio will get to San Antonio to join us in May of next year. And uh, I'll get the chance to speak fa uh, you know, face to face with him again then. Because as, as we said in that, in that episode... It's the face-to-face -face networking that really makes this special. Okay, that is it for another episode. And I will look forward to being with you again very soon. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over. But don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business.